Hey Nintendo fans, it's Jay Wits here, and man, has it been a wild E3 week. One of the craziest titles to be announced was Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle for the Nintendo Switch, somehow combining Mushroom Kingdom, the minion-esque Rabbids that started with Rayman, and XCOM-style tactical isometric combat. What? Ubisoft sponsored the channel and flew me into E3, where I was able to grab about an hour of their time with an early build of the game. At its face value, Mario and Rabbids combined seems absurd to me, but I love strategy games, and as soon as I was able to jump into the gameplay, I realized that there is a ton to unpack for this game. I've decided to make a list of the 10 major things I've learned during my time with Mario plus Rabbids. You can tell straight from the game's main character art assets, but the main playable party includes Mario, Peach, Luigi, Yoshi, and a rabid version of each of those four characters. The Rabbids are pretty drastically different from their look-alike counterparts, and it's pretty funny seeing them react with their doppelgangers. Even Mario is like, what the heck is that? Rabbit Peach takes a lot of selfies. Even regular Peach is a little more relaxed this time, brutally blasting Rabbids with their gun only to pull a, oh, did I do that? Look. But beyond the main cast, I've actually been interested in figuring out where the rest of the Mushroom Kingdom lies in this mixed-up rabbit-infested world. Some regular Mario friends and foes seem to be around in their original forms, like Toad, Goombas, Boo, and Chain Chomp. And then some characters like Donkey Kong look like they've been absorbed by a white rabbit in the form of a boss. One boss I was able to battle in my demo took the form of a piranha plant. Outside of Mario characters, there were a few big narrative roles, such as your guide, Beepo, essentially a Roomba with ears, and this one special rabbit that seems to have the ability to merge a rabbit and Mushroom Kingdom character together. By accident? On purpose? Not sure, but he didn't look too happy about it. While most of the story remained a secret to me, I did notice Bowser Jr. looming over the crew at the very end of the demo. And if there's Little Bow, I would not be too shocked if Big Bow had something to do with it. There's a lot going on here. Arguably my biggest focal point with the demo was just learning the core gameplay. I had no idea that they were going to go for more of an XCOM-style turn-based squad shooter. The demo had me with Mario, Rabid Peach, and Rabid Luigi. With each of your three characters, you can perform three different actions. Move, attack with your equipped weapon if there's a target in range, and activate a special technique. Each character can perform all three actions in one turn, and you also are not limited in the order that you perform them per character. So you might fire with character A, use a technique on character B, move with character C, and then go back to character A and use their move, etc. Once you're done with your actions, the enemy gets the same luxury, combining their movement, abilities, and attacks until they're exhausted, and then it goes back to you. The biggest thing that stood out to me in terms of strategic options is movement. You can do an insane amount of things with a single action. Move. If you're able to directly collide with an enemy within your movement range, you can grab a free melee dash attack and continue with your movement without penalty. And without using your attack action. You can also move to another ally within your attack range for a jump boost, which can set up a specific stomp ability for your characters, gain an attack boost from high terrain advantage, or simply move farther than your normal move action would take you. There are also rabid warp pipes that allow you to zoom across the map with a tiny movement penalty, allowing you to still get that dash bonus attack out of nowhere. Compared to other tactics games, I was surprised with how much sheer distance you can travel in a single turn by combining and abusing these abilities. But despite how much complexity there is in movement, one thing I found pleasantly simple was the game's cover system. If a character is out of cover, they can be hit 100% of the time by attacks within range. Shallow cover gives you or the enemy 50% chance of dodging an attack if it blocks a character's line of fire, and then the rare giant cover provides a full 100% chance to dodge. Incredibly simple, but it was kind of refreshing to only have to deal with coin flips or absolutes. Oh, and that 100% cover? Doesn't mean a thing if you get flanked. Or if your cover gets destroyed, because that- Oh! That can be pretty bad. Oh! Because then you're out of cover for the whole turn, and everybody gets to hit you. Stop it! Stop that! Cut it out! This is all in one turn! Oh yeah, and it turns out that the game's soundtrack is done by the marimba master himself, Grant Kirkup. The man behind music for Banjo-Kazooie, DK64, Viva Pinata, Civilization Beyond Earth, all kinds of amazing stuff. Just look how happy he is to be making the music for a Mario game. Here's 30 seconds of his beautiful jams without my stupid words interrupting it. One of the most 
unexpected things about this game is the fact that it uses so many guns. I mean, you can't have a tactic shooter without guns, but they aren't exactly the average form of combat you find in the Mushroom Kingdom. My demo only scratched the surface for these. They vary in a ton of different ways, and new gun types can be purchased for each character with all the coins that you pick up along your adventure. Like this one! Hell in a Shell! You can't make this up. These vary by base damage, attack range, how much damage they deal to cover, and critical hit effects. I saw a handful of mid-range blasters, and even amongst those I saw a wide variety of different effects. Each gun's critical has a percent chance of triggering, a damage bonus, and an effect bonus if it all goes off. Criticals that I saw ranged from lighting a character on fire and making them frenzy, eliminating their next movement action by making them stick to the floor with honey, blasting a foe away with a giant push effect, a vampiric heal damage effect, and more. While more classes weren't in my demo, between the trailer and the website, I've also seen a quick glimpse at long-range weapons, rocket launchers, grenades, and even melee weapons. On top of weapons, from what I can tell, there are two kinds of abilities for characters. One is a special movement ability, such as Mario's Jump Stomp, which weren't in my demo. The other is Techniques, which are one of the three actions that you can take for a single character's turn. These are the game changers, such as Mario's Hero Sight, which works just like XCOM's Overwatch, which allows you to fire at the first enemy within range that moves on your opponent's turn. The other specials in my demo were a healing pulse and a shield that blocked Luigi Rabbit from special conditions. The downside is that all of these seem to have a multi-turn cooldown once used, so they're definitely abilities that you want to use wisely instead of spamming. I also caught a glimpse of a huge character skill tree during the game's Twitch debut, so it looks like you're going to have a lot of choices when it comes to optimizing your skills. While I only got to play through a handful of beginner maps, it was nice to see that by my conclusion there were already signs of more than one type of map objective. My boss map, for example, only required that you defeat the boss character, so you could risk avoiding the smaller minions and just rush down that one big baddie to win. I was also told that the game would have some kind of Metroid-style progression items which would allow you to revisit older areas in order to discover new challenges. I always enjoy when games like Fire Emblem have maps with objectives beyond simply defeating all the enemies, so I'm excited to hear that there will be multiple objectives in this game as well. And while the main meat of Kingdom Battle is clearly the combat, there is stuff to do between battles too. Similar to other Mario RPGs, I saw a variety of environmental puzzles over the course of my demo, from mazes to interlocking bridges to speed challenges. Because your crew can't actually jump in the overworld, they gave me a very similar feel to the Captain Toad games. Exploring the world helps you find valuable coins and weapons, giving you a better shot on the battlefield. And finally, I was able to get a brief look into how different enemy types function. Beyond standard move-and-shoot enemies were rabbits with helmets, which allowed them to bounce off of each other and launch across the battlefield just like you can. My boss, Parabit Plant, had a rocket launcher that inflicted automatic burn and destroyed terrain in a single hit which made it surprisingly challenging. Also, when you switch to the tactical view, you can do a very Fire Emblem-esque thing to check to see how far your opponents can move, as well as how much range their attacks would have after they used their maximum movement. Overall, I only got a small taste of this game, but it did leave me wanting more. Combining Mario with the Rabbids is such a weird idea, but that absurdity definitely does transfer well into the gameplay. I love strategy games, and I can't wait to see how some of the added layers of depth will play into the game's later maps once they're available later this summer. Those are the 10 main takeaways that I got from my time with Mario Plus Rabbids, but if you want to learn more about the game or specific character skills, you can click the link in the description to check this game out. I'll also be releasing the full footage of what I recorded during my demo session, so if you're interested in seeing how the game plays over a longer period of time, I'll have a link for that video in the description too once I'm able to upload it with this terrible E3 hotel internet. Thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring the channel with an upcoming Nintendo Switch exclusive. Thank you for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo E3 coverage.